Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday. It is time for another Linux Top 5. And so what we're going to be looking at today is I picked out top five things about Manjaro um, that we're going to be talking about. And um, in, in this video here, uh, of course, I've been uh, talking about, I've been using Manjaro now for about two weeks, I think. Uh, two or three weeks, somewhere around there. And uh, I've done a few videos on it already. And uh, of course, I'm running Manjaro Budgie. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do a top five. Now, what I'm not going to do um, next week is a top five bad things because, honestly, I haven't really found five bad things about it. There's a few things that are a little bit, yeah, a little bit okay, but that's okay. Every operating system, we get that, uh, that type of effect. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about um, talk about this in uh, uh, just talking about the various things that I've found. Uh, overall, I really like it. Um, it is definitely on the list of things that if somebody was like, hey, I just need a, a good Linux distro that I can do my basic work. I don't really want to experiment with a whole lot. Just do kind of kind of my basic thing. I would I am definitely putting this distro with this desktop environment on that list of things. So I'd recommend a Linux uh, um, a Mint Cinnamon. Um, I would recommend an Ubuntu Mate. Um, I'm officially uh, adding to this list uh, Manjaro Budgie. Um, I also, of course, still really like uh, Peppermint. So, you know, of course, there's a lot of different distros uh, out there and maybe too many distros, as some people may say. But here are my top five uh, things about uh, Manjaro running Budgie. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to point out is the packages available. There are a lot of really good packages in the system, and if what you're looking for is not available, you can enable uh, the Arch user repository in order to find even more. So I'm going to open up my menu here and search for a software. Uh, you can do uh, add remove software or software update. Both of those will load up the same thing. You'll see that I do have packages available. And um, if you are looking for the uh, if you're looking for the repositories, um, of course you can come over here and you can look for extra repositories, uh, community repositories, etc. But if you need the Arch repositories, um, then you can come down into your preferences. You need to enter your password for that. And then what you can do is um, over here in AUR, uh, of course, make sure that uh, this does have some potential risks, but enable this. Simply toggle this guy on. Here's your build directory. And then check updates from, uh, from the Arch user repository. And then this is just going to give you a whole lot more things. So, for example, I was looking for Skype. Um, and... Uh, it is, you will not find Skype in the regular repository. Uh, you will find it in the other repository. Now, the reason it's showing up like this here is because of the, um, uh, I already have it installed. Now, there's a few different ones. There is the newer version. There's an older beta version for people who had problems with the original. And, and then, of course, there's still the old 4.3 version. I'm actually running the 4.3 version of Skype. Um, on this just because I, I was having problems getting any of them working earlier and I think it was probably something on the Skype uh, uh, Skype uh, system itself it did get itself resolved and of course the why am I still using a stupid Microsoft product for those that are not in the know I am a web developer I have to maintain uh, communication with clients and well Microsoft completely killed uh, Skype on every other platform so mm, still works though Still works over here without me having to get into a lot of crazy stuff. Um, also, I, it occurred to me, I, I should mention this as well. If you're having a hard time reading the fonts, I, I actually in, was experimenting with just utilizing custom system-wide fonts. I actually like this. It is a little harder to read, but I really like this font, so that's why I'm using it. I chose not to go back to the default fonts to show the system. Just to show you that one of the things, uh, we'll get into it a little bit later, is the, the customization. Uh, but... You have the ability to look for uh, things in the regular repositories and in the um, the Arch user repositories, and it's very easy to enable this just inside of your inside of your settings. And so, I mean, this is uh, everything I was looking for is here. Every software package that I have used traditionally, if it was not available in the Manjaro repository, it was certainly available in the Arch user repositories. So um, that's a big win. All the software I was looking for is is here. Um, 
there's my downside is that my <laughs> camera crashes every now and again. Okay, so the second uh, second great uh, great thing about Manjaro Budgie is media works really great out of the box. So uh, you installed it. I had it install the media codecs, um, and everything plays out of the box even better than my uh, my Linux Mint KDE system, uh, which is the the default Linux uh, on this particular operating system. And Kitty agrees. Media's good on Manjaro. Yes, Manjaro Budgie rocks. You should use it. Thank you, Kitty. All right. So, um, what am I using for media? Well, I'm using um, I'm using uh, Rhythmbox, which actually I really haven't used much. I don't do as quite as much audio. Um, I have Kodi installed. I have VLC installed. All of these are able to play well. Well, Kodi and VLC are able to play DVDs right out of the box. That's usually what I use it for. I got my Leverage Season Four right here. I borrowed from a friend. Uh, so I got that going on the phone or on the um, uh, the computer right now. So I've been playing those on DVD. That works. It can interface with my media servers without a problem. I actually did not have to uh, attach the my media servers uh, with the fstab file, which is what I've traditionally had to do in the past. Everything worked right out of the box. Um, so that's kind of a, a big benefit. Um, the only downside I'm seeing to the media is every every you know. I don't know, 10 minutes or so, it'll kind of give me a little bit of a freeze lag. Same thing happens on several other Linux distros I've used media for, except in those, the audio stays, the video lags for a second and then catches back up. On this, everything lags for about the same length of time. So it's right on par with other Linux distros in that uh, the the media the media works just fine. Um, I'm able to play um, you know YouTube without a problem. I go to view.yahoo.com to get the free Hulu streams without a problem. Um, and have I? Yeah, I think I played some some uh, digital video as well uh, on the system without any problem. I have not experimented with anything like Netflix because I don't use Netflix. Um, I haven't experimented with anything like Amazon Prime. Again, I don't use those types of things. I'm assuming, though, if I can play the free Hulu streams, I can probably play Netflix and Amazon as well. I'm using Firefox for those. Um, the third thing is that uh, there are good, uh, a lot of good settings and customizations. This, uh, this is generally a desktop environment specific thing. So uh, in this case, this is uh, specific to the budgie environment. Uh, but the settings available to the system is, is very nice. So you can just go into the menu and search for your, uh, I got to spell it right, uh, your budgie desktop settings. And inside your budgie desktop settings, of course, um, this is why if you like the modernness of GNOME but you don't like the lack of customization, you might want to check out Budgie because it has a lot of the a lot of the the same look and the feel. Except I can customize it a lot. Um, I can do taskbars. I can do dock mode. If I get, of course, I don't like the dock mode the way this works. The only real downside to Budgie, as I've said before, is there's not a launcher functionality. But I have my my Cairo dock over here set up with the exact functionality I want for launchers. So that's what I'm doing for for those. Uh, but you can adjust your uh, your styling of your widgets. You can select a light or a dark theme. Um, your desktop by default that has desktop icons turned on you can decide which desktop icons you want or you can turn them off entirely and then you'll uh, lose the desktop support some people like that most people actually don't is what I'm finding um, you can customize your fonts pretty easily um, so you know you can see I'm using what's called 1942 report if you like this font um, it's available for free on font squirrel is usually the place where I get my uh, open source fonts um, so you can uh, come down down here and do those. Of course, I have uh, I'm using some customized uh, icons for my Cairo dock. These are actually all installable in the um, just re installing them from the repositories. And then I went into the dock, of course, and I made some a few small font adjustments. Um, your windows, you can select your uh, your left or your right button layout. Uh, you can do other things. The only real downside I'm finding is um, if you boot up, for example, Firefox, and I'm going to move this out of the way, you'll see that the uh, the uh, icons, uh, the, the window borders up here are all very consistent except on Chromium. If you load up Chromium, you get very inconsistent uh, window borders. Um, so that's 
really a, a downside to what I've seen, and I just lost my camera again. Downside is the camera keeps crashing. I don't know why. Um, it, also, in the customizability, you can cr uh, have multiple panels. Um, for your individual panels, you can do things like you can set your, your transparency. I really like the shadow and the transparency. I really like the way this system looks. I got to say, the, the way I have this guy set up, it looks pretty sweet. Um, and it's all all done just with the uh, with the trans uh, you know with all the settings inside of the panels of course I can add my applets of course the only downside of budgie and something other people have asked for in the past is there's no way to have your standard launchers on budgie um, but uh, you can otherwise uh, otherwise you can um, um, do pretty much everything else you want on it and I've of course replaced the the lack of the launchers with uh, with the Cairo dock which is something I wanted to do anyway um, and I have an entire video about how I set up Cairo dock like this if you're interested in this and uh, you want to do one of these uh, uh, go ahead and check out that video um, in your auto start um, of course, you can auto start a variety of things. Uh, I've had to add the Cairo dock on here. Uh, other distros, it adds automatically. This one, I actually had to add it. Um, so that is your budgie settings. Woohoo, I didn't lose my camera that time. All right, uh, number four, uh, four and five general things. Um, I had a whole lot less fighting with this system than I have with m many other systems. I think the only other system I've used that I've not had to fight with to get things working is Linux Mint Cinnamon. Um, and even in 18, there was an error in one of the audio input uh, files where um, I didn't have the ability to um, uh, to uh, select the proper media system. That was a known bug. I'm not sure if it's resolved right now or not. Um, I had some videos about how to fix it. Um, as among the list of less fighting with the system is I like the status bar over here. This applies to Budgie. Uh, but one of the things I usually have to do on KDE when I'm using Skype or, or Zoom or, or any other type of, of audio video type stuff, I usually have to fight a little bit with, the, with what are the inputs and what are the outputs going to figure out what I want where. Uh, but on this system here, pulling up this main bar, I can just very quickly select. I've actually had not had to fight with Skype zoom or anything else at all while I was using media inputs and outputs very very nice system As you can see it uh, you know it I can choose the main default output I can choose the uh, the microphone actually has an output line on the top I can choose that uh, whatever I, I need to do um, and then for the input I can choose which one I want to input I could literally click this right here and my audio uh, my audio would go really bad in fact let me try and do that there you go. Um, so now I'm actually pulling audio from the webcam, and this is why you want to have a good external microphone. <laughs> so there we are. We should be back now. Uh, but I had to fight with the system a whole lot less than I've had to fight with other systems to get things working. Um, and of course, the last thing that I'm picking out is uh, relating to kernel. Uh, a downside of um, one of the downsides to um, Linux Mint is that. Um, the kernel updates are inside of your main system updates. Okay, so one of the problems on Linux Mint is all of the kernel updates are available inside the regular software updater and updating the kernel at times can cause some problems and can break some systems. And so what you wanna make sure that you're doing is, you know, make sure you update your kernels when you have time to fix a system if it happens to break. And so they've separated where the kernel updates. It's not in the basic software, but instead um, you want to go into your Manjaro settings manager. And inside of your settings manager, there's a separate place for your kernel over here. And then you can decide which kernel that you want to use. Of course, if you know what you're doing and you need the more cutting edge, you can install even the, you know, even the latest, uh, not necessarily the most stable ones or you can go with whichever kernel that you want. So we have a nice separate uh, kernel manager here uh, in addition to the separated from the, the basic software. So that's actually a, a good selling point for this that um, you can do that. Of course, the downside on that is it update, it you know gives you a pop-up every time it finds a new kernel and you may or may not actually want that. Particularly if you're a new user and you're not having system problems, I would avoid updating the kernel 
um, uh, unless you have the time to, you know, the time to, to revert it or fix it or whatever else. Uh, so that's just a tidbit for for new users. So that is my final take on a bud on um, <laughs> excuse me Manjaro Budgie. And uh, overall, I like the system. Um, I think that this is definitely one of those ones. Uh, if somebody wants to know a good uh, a good Linux system to use, um, I like the fact that I haven't had to dump into the into the command line much at all on this system at all. Uh, I think I did just a couple things. Actually, I, I think I did some AWS server management on this, uh, which worked pretty well. And no, it wasn't AWS. I think I was I was SSHing into some servers that I have. Uh, which actually was was uh, very good, very easy as well. So, you know, overall, I think this is a very good system. I I like it. I like what I uh, what's going on with it. And um, um, overall, I'm pleased with the system. So um, that's what I have to say about that. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.